You know what? I feel sorry for season one of Banshee because season two is going to be Banshee season one. I would describe season two of Banshee as small town, big consequences. We've left everybody uh, hanging as to the discovery of the body of real Lucas Hood, and we pick up within days of that discovery. How many times can you bury the same guy? We wouldn't be out here if your lazy ass had dug a deep enough hole the first time. Shut up and grab his feet. Lucas starts off uh, pretty beaten up. You're a mess. He got used to it. In doing his job as a sheriff, he's built a community around him and realizing that that there's more in Banshee for him than just Anna slash Carrie. It might be a relationship developing with a certain female cop. What you did, coming to check up on me every day these past few weeks, that was a big help. There's no sexual chemistry. I mean, we didn't set that up last year. There's nothing going on. That, of course, makes everything even messier, and we like a good mess on Banshee. There's nothing going on between us. I don't know what you're saying. I'm just a cop doing my job. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, Agent Jim Racine comes to the town of Banshee to figure out what the heck happened at the end of season one. There was a little bit of melee that took place in episode 10 of last year. And um, the FBI boys didn't like that. You often go into battles with civilians for backup. There were mitigating factors. We had to move immediately. You think that he's going to come to town and just blow everything up, and then it turns out he's very focused in what he wants, and it might not be what you expect. Not to put too fine a point on it. Are you fucking him? Excuse me? Excuse my language. Were you involved in a sexual relationship with the sheriff? Of course not. This season is actually a really big season for Proctor and Rebecca. The family is not receptive to me anymore. Um, I'm a bad girl. We find her at a crossroad, torn between returning to her roots and this desire for the life and the freedom that comes with Proctor, but it comes at a price. You choose my world, you have to know there will be casualties. If you can't deal with that, then... Maybe you do belong back on the farm. She's kind of this needle going back and forth, not sure of what she really wants. She's the one that'll take the biggest journey and slowly, slowly enter the dark side. Okay, let's go home. Since we pick up on the season a few days after season one left off, Job is naturally still in Banshee. I think now might be a good time to remind you we need to get the fuck out of this town. Not yet. At the same time, we drop right into another action sequence. You know, in typical Banshee fashion, we're sort of, we're right back into it straight away, which is, which is really exciting. Flip that bitch! <laughs> we said this from the moment we conceived of the show and started pitching the show. He will never stop being a thief. Time! Okay, I'll be right behind you! And you start to get an insight as to who these people were before Anthony's character is released from prison. Season two just kind of takes it to a whole new level. I think we're all really confident that what we've done in season two will more than satisfy every single fan of season one. And at the same time, we've made it a richer, more textured show that uh, I think will also appeal greatly to new fans. I'm thrilled for January. I cannot wait for people to see this. There's so much going on in every episode. Every episode is jam-packed. It's hypnotically gruesome. Some of these conflicts are so heated that they have to come to fruition. Something has to happen. Something has to give. And a lot gives in season two.